Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and we are in the Dreaming City. It is Taken Curse week three of three, so it is the strongest. That's why you see the giant floating balls in the air, like the Taken Essence actually through the atmosphere, like just in the air as well, kind of coming out of the ground. What this also means is the Shattered Throne is available. Now, you may have heard me talk about this. This is the three-person mini raid. Now, one thing to make note of, they actually have a couple triumphs that are set up for solo. So one is just a solo completion of this, and then one is a solo flawless completion, which alone sounds a little crazy to me, but that will be a different task much later on. But what I want to do is give you guys a guide of the location, um, and then the first section, just a complete breakdown of everything in that area. There is a boss location that is going to be part of your wish and request when you get it. Um, there are different like symbols that take you certain places, and the pace is kind of a maze. So this is going to be a full breakdown of the first area in the Shattered Throne, called Erebus. Now, if you want to jump straight to it, the timestamps have been on the map for you guys. That's totally fine. Uh, but this is going to be your drive to the location, or at least the fastest way I know how to get there. So you're going to land in the Davilian Mist, jump on your Sparrow, and we're going to head to basically the observatory where you'd be taking your offerings of the Oracle. And we're actually going to go underneath that, and we're going to the Convalescence. But we're kind of going in a weird way. I'll show you guys how. So, follow this path over here through the Blue Rocks. And then, of course, across the ravine that like you cannot take your sparrow across. And it's literally just far enough that you cannot get your sparrow across it, which is, to me, a little annoying. But what are you going to do? I've tried multiple times to land on that lip right around the corner. I cannot get my sparrow up here. So, once you're in the spine of carries, you'll come towards the observatory, this big structure with the two spires kind of out of the top. If you've ever been to, I think it was Nashville, Tennessee, the AT&T building looks very similar. Uh, but you can skip these enemies, go off to the left over here, and then we're just going to run down a small trail that you may not know is there. Floating rocks apparently do things. And down here. Now down here is a way to kind of get to a portal. It takes you into different areas of the Dreaming City. The portals will take you around if you know how they work. I couldn't tell you where most of them go, but I do know where this one goes. So follow underneath here. You will see the portal. And we'll go ahead and jump in. Teleport you to another spot in the Dreaming City. So now, we are in what you would call still the Spine of Carries, apparently. I feel like that actually needs to change sometime soon. But, the nice thing about this one, it basically takes you on a straight shot to where the Shattered Throne entrance is at. So you see the big blue crystal. You can go around it. And you'll see the Confluence. Sorry, not the Convalescence. I don't even know what I said earlier, if I did say that. But the Confluence. So this is normally the room that you would see if you come out of, I think, the Corrupted Strike. I think Sir, one of the uh, Tetians might be standing right here doing part of her discussion. But as you can tell now, the Shattered Throne Room, which normally is a little darker, has a whole lot going on. So I think the Blind Well is what's above, actually, if you jump down. The Blind Well should be above you. The Observatory and all that stuff potentially is what's above and actually feeding this portal. So... The idea is if you come over here and talk to the Tetian, she'll kind of explain, you know, it's been building for two weeks, I've watched this happen, and then this thing opens up. So when you come over here, we'll talk to her. For more than two weeks, I have watched a sickness consume my city. My people have been laid low by this infection, this ugly wish. I am so hungry for vengeance. The well has opened the gateway. May the Queen's will protect you. And cousin, if the walls begin whispering, do not listen. Alright, so here we are. The Shattered Throne. Strike back at the curse that plagues the Dreaming City. So this is actually everything coming for full circle for the Dreaming City. So you have um, what started this whole three-week taken curse when we actually killed Riven, the raid boss. And then... You do this three-week cycle, build this up, and then what happens is when we kill the boss in here, basically it kicks off the three-week cycle all over again. Now, there's lore behind it. If you want to go know that one, Bife will for sure cover that one for you. But let's go into the Shattered Throne and cover the opening. All right, Guardians. So when you spawn in, uh, you'll be a little farther back, actually. I just have been in here multiple times working on this video, so you'll be behind this door. Just jump forward. The door will open. Pretty no-brainer. Once you come through the door, you will see the entire place. It is insanely huge and also pretty amazing looking. Uh, if you look down at the ground, you'll see kind of the fog effects of stuff blowing in. Basically, the skybox in here is just ridiculously cool. Uh, but we are in what you would call, or what they call, Erebus. 
This is the entrance section. I'm sure that means something in Latin. I'd have to look it up. Uh, but what you'll do is jump down here and come forward. Now, <laughs> pop myself on a jump there. Basically, the way this whole section is broken up, you're going to have... I'm going to do this explanation from right up here on the tippy top. You're going to have each section, and you guys can actually see somewhere. There's a boss in each section. Each section has a symbol tied to it. Now, the opening is going to have its first one. There's no symbol tied in there. It's just called the ingress. And basically, it's going to give you the first symbol of a direction to go. Now, I've worked on a map. It's really crappily hand-drawn, so I tried to put a very crude version into, you know, some lines and text that you guys can see and use. So I hope the map helps you. If you want to access it, you know, maybe on your phone somewhere else, what I'm going to do is basically put it on Twitter. If you want to look it up, I'm going to put a hashtag on it, and the hashtag is going to be Erebus Map. E-R-E-B-U-S-M-A-P. If you look that one up, I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of those hashtags out there, so go ahead and find that one. Uh, but the idea with this is going to be as follows. Every section has a symbol. When I kill the enemy, the boss in the first section, it's going to give me a symbol telling me where to go. When I go to that section, there's going to be some ads that will have spawned there. I'm going to kill that boss. When a symbol appears, it's going to be telling me where in this place to go. This place is kind of a maze if you're just wandering through. Maybe if you're lower level, haven't been in here for the first time. I wandered around, figured out where... Basically, just about everything is in here, so that is why I made the map, and hopefully this helps you guys out. Now, the symbols themselves, each section has a symbol, which will be, like, basically unlit, basically just saying this is this area. It's kind of like a stone on the wall. Those do not change. The symbols that appear can appear in different order, sending you to different areas, but each area is always going to be the same symbol. It just depends on which order you do them in. Um, now, as you run through here, there's going to be random spawns that like pop out of walls when you get to what I would call a proximity area. They're almost like proximity sensors like, oh, you've gone here, you tripped the proximity sensor, we're going to spawn enemies. Sometimes they're phalanx, sometimes it's captain, there's quite a few sections where thralls do it. Um, and the bosses are basically different in each section. So, I'm hoping the map helps, and I'm hoping this guide helps you guys out as well. So, jumping on down, we're going to get a little closer. And then I'm going to find a good spot to cut in so I can actually make this kind of a distinct place to start. So here we go. This is called Erebus. And this is Shattered Throne Part 1. So once you guys get down this far, what you're going to do is see the ads up, to, up in front of you. I wouldn't get too close. That is why for the build, my recommendation real quick is going to be Pulse Rifle, Scout, Range of some kind. I'm going Void. Not really for any specific reason. There's not a ton of shields that my solar is not going to get through. You could also go arc. There are some arc shields. There's actually not any void shields that I can specifically think of. Um, it's just this is one of mine that is a curated scout rifle. But if you want to switch over here to like, hey, the cut and run with outlaw and triple tap. I just got this roll, so I'm actually kind of happy about it. Um, I might switch to that one just to show you guys different alternatives. But either way, whatever super you feel comfortable with. Honestly, the one that I'm using right now is in that oh crap moment if you don't want to die. Main reason you don't want to die is if you die anywhere until you unlock the entire next section, which will be a separate video, you have to redo it all. So, that being said, if there's that oh crap moment of like a void bomb or hammers that save your butt or whatever it is you feel comfortable with, that's what you probably want to bring with you on this section because some things will get you at range and whatever you need in that moment where you might get in a pinch... That's kind of my advice of what to bring. All classes should be able to do this. You should all be able to make the jumps. So keep that in mind as well. Now you're going to have some acolytes that are going to be in the back kind of doing their thing. Now once you get closer, you got to jump on these little platforms and work your way forward. Now if I got all the acolytes, I'd be surprised. There's probably one or two stragglers up there, but we'll see. If it is just the boss, it's really not so bad. Whisper will do well. Sleeper. But again, if you just kind of stay towards the bottom of the stairs, he's not going to be quite as annoying. But if you got Whisper, which is my recommendation, it's a nice way to do some damage to him. So, triple shots, you maintain your heavy ammo, he's going to kind of creep up. And again, if you stay towards the bottom of the stairs, most of the fire won't hurt you. Now, you can see him, maybe not all that well, but he dies fairly quickly with something like that. If you don't have Whisper, you know, rockets, heavies, all that stuff you got is important. Now, pick up your ammo. So, now you see the symbol has appeared. So this would be, you know, the jumping fish. Looks like a fish kind of jumping up out of the water and diving back down in. Whatever you want to call it, there are names out there. Uh, I'll put a link to those. There's just like a guide that people seem to use what to call these symbols. If I call them the wrong thing, sorry in advance. But this one I know specifically is going to be out to the right, just because I know the whole map. 
It's going to be an area called the Garden of the Prophet. Each area has a name, and those named areas have a symbol tied to them. So I'm going to reference those. Now, if you don't have the map, but you're like walking through and you're like, okay, I know where this is at, and I was doing it before. If I'm just like, garden and jump fish. I was even typing notes to myself when I was going through and doing this. If you feel like you want to, but you can, but hopefully the map helps you from doing that. So when you come in, you'll notice the first area we've got. This one is called the hallowed ground. This is where you're going to end up. This is the final section, no matter what. This will be your final symbol. So when you see the little diving bird here, this is the final symbol. It means you made it to the last little fight. It means you have to come back in here and deal with the final boss in this room. So, that being said, we're going to the right first, just because that's where mine is taking me. Yours may have you go somewhere else left. If you get, say, the Dragon Breathing Fire, fire that's going to take you to the D Temple of the Deep. Say you get the Infinity Snake. You're going way to the far left, to the Temple of the Infinity, of the Infinite. All of those things will be in a random order, so just keep that in mind, but I will try and explain each section as we go through. Now, when you head outside of this area, it doesn't matter the left or the right, you're always going to have thralls that spawn. So, once I kind of peek out a little bit, basically just turn right around, you're going to have quite a few thralls that spawn. And you won't see all the ones that spawn at first. You're going to have some of these um, orange bar thralls. Those are going to be a little harder to kill. And you're going to have quite a few. They're going to have spawned a fairly decent distance away. It means they have to kind of make it to you. So, they're going to be coming at you for a little while. I'm just using my go figure because it works well. Mows them down. Rampage seems to help kill stuff quicker. Now, yep, told you. There's plenty more coming. So hang here. Just wait for them to come through. And you'll get this part played out pretty quick. All right. So from here, we're pretty good. Now, before I go into the boss, I want to explain something. There are hobgoblin taken snipers that are just kind of perched on the roofs of this entire area. And they kind of spawn in sporadically. So if you're going through and all of a sudden you hear this whoosh, but you don't see anything spawn in, look up and around you. Or go back where you were and hide for a second until you get to safety because they hurt depending on what you're dealing with. Now, in the Garden of the Prophet, the boss is always going to be a Vandal Sniper. Now, the Vandals have their effects back, so you can actually, they're going to have their little shields. So that's going to make this a little bit more annoying. But again, as usual, what I like to do is take out the ads first. So look for all the acolytes in the eyes, and then focus on the boss later. But if the boss sees you, just make sure you hide, because he's going to hurt. Now, I'm not creeping up too far yet, because typically right around that corner to my left is going to be one of those wonderful little sniper guys. So watch out for those. And you can, you know, kind of hover over here on the different sides of the walls. That's the boss. Try and switch back and forth in sides. I just want all the acolytes dead, so I can just solely focus on the boss. Now, off to my left, you'll actually notice on my radar, up above is now the red bar. That's the snipers I was talking about. So, still trying to get all the eyes, which there are so many of them down there, it's crazy. Trying to kill all those, there's one acolyte still casting all of them. That sniper's still off to my left, which makes life really fun. I want the acolyte dead. There's the sniper, I can see him. Hiding behind him. Okay, so all the ads are down. Let me focus on this and then we'll get to the snipers. Nope, not all the acolytes are down. They just keep spawning like a gazillion of those eyes. So believe me, if you can find all the acolytes and the boss is not guarding them all, ridiculous to clean you. Just line aside them, just don't get too far forward. But once you can find the boss, time to start shutting him down once he stops twitching. He's really not too bad health-wise, but again, Whisper does hit like a truck, so if you don't have it, just know it could take you a little longer. It's okay, just scout rifle him to death if you need to. And again, yep, there's your sniper over there. Actually, I'm gonna try and get those on my map as well for you guys, so you kinda know where they're gonna spawn. So, boss is not, there you go, boss is not dead. If you are fighting one of these guys, try and stray back and forth a little bit. And if you get in a, you know, low health situation, just hide. Because at this point, as I've told you, don't die. It's not worth the death. And again, if he pops a shield, just hang cover. This is why I'm standing here, because that cover's on my left. And there you go. First one down. All right. So, now the snipers. There is always more than one. Typically, there's actually three. So, first one is going to be right up there. 
Pretty easy to kill, not too bad. But he is not alone, I can promise you that. So my advice is go find the other ones. So there's another one up there. And there should be a third when I creep a little bit forward. What's behind me? Nope, just the guy down below. Well, magically, that's actually where I'm going, but there are two of the snipers. Two or three, there's usually one more you don't see. So if I jump up there, he might spawn behind us. So just be careful if you go jumping that direction. But when we go over here, now we've got the W snake. So if you reference your map, you're going to see the W snake is going to be in the binary shrine. Now, this is going to be a minotaur. Quickest way to the binary shrine. Actually, I'm getting like so far a decent run at this. this is going to be right down here. So if you guys need a point of reference, I came out of the hallway, I went straight towards the symbol, and if I follow the stairs to the left and down and underneath this, you know, cracked walkway, then I'm going to head towards the binary shrine and that guy is staring straight at me. Now, if you get a couple nice whisper shots, I might be able to get a pretty good chunk of damage on him. Now he does teleport a little bit. Missed my third one. Well, imperfect shooting, what are you going to do? So. Now, when you creep forward, there's going to be a phalanx that jumps out of a wall. So, creep forward, get him to spawn, and then try and pull back. Now, if I don't get him to spawn, but I did tick this guy off. Well, apparently I can't kill him. Hopefully you guys are better to whisper shots than I am, but that's just how this is partially going to go. One more is really all I need. Acolytes, again, at every single section. There he is. Not really too uh, aggressive. And he was pretty low, so he dropped. So, again, as I said, watch the wall. Out comes your phalanx. Do what you need to do to kill him. It is going to be an orange bar phalanx. And they're pretty aggressive, so be ready with something of decent power. And that's where maybe the Ikolo shotgun actually does save you. Because there's a captain that does something similar. So being able to kill those guys pretty quickly may save you those deaths, which, you know, honestly may be worth it. Because I'm not using my scout for very much. And I seem to be get, getting a decent amount of heavy drops in here. So here's the other sniper. No, I was looking for one of them. So once you come into the binary shrine, if you're looking at the eggs, you're going to be coming from the garden. Slightly up to your right-hand side, there will be a sniper. So watch for him. So grab any ammo. Now we have the infinite infinity snake. And we're going to the Temple of the Infinite, which is going to be in the far back left. Now, there are multiple ways to get there. So you'll notice if I come out to the front... In case this isn't clear. I know I say that and I know exactly where I'm going. But I came up the ramp, walked into the room, and then I went to the right. This is what I would say the north side of the room if you're looking at my map. The reason I say the north because it's the temple of the sky, the tower of the sky is like the top part of my map, so that's kind of what I'm referencing. And then over off to your left is going to be the infinite. So that's the temple of the infinite. And I might actually even jump out here, see if you got any snipers to deal with or anything. And Toland is actually over here perched on a little corner. He's not always in the same spot, but he does seem to be in a few. I have seen him over here. I'll point out another reference point I've seen him at as well. But, again, if you have an angle and you've got something with decent range, pick off the guys you can. May as well. So this is going to be the Centurion. This is going to be, um, again, the Temple of the Infinite. Trying to take all those guys out. There's one Acolyte that continues to hide. So let's get a little closer. And I'm going around the outside. Now. Do you covet yours, Bo? That's just asking about Wishender. Pretty much straight up. Now this little thing right here in front of me is going to be a captain. Now this is one of the few times I'm just going to use my super to destroy him. So. He will spawn when you're close. Actually, he's going to come out behind me. Sorry. And just shut him down. He's not worth it unless you have a. If you have the Ikolo shotgun, he's solar shield. That'd be easy. You can pop his shield with Whisper. If you're good, go for it. If you feel like you're in a pinch, use your super. You're gonna have plenty of time if you play this slow. So once you creep up here a little closer, you start to see more of these acolyte eyes. Probably the one acolyte who's actually cast them. And as it's a Centurion, you've got a bit of an annoying fight because guess what? Axiom bolts are gonna be coming constantly. So if you can throw anything in there to do a little damage, that'd be good. He is arc here, so honestly, even switching over to arc might be better. Just because it is still primary ammo, so I could even do that just to show you guys. Switch it over to arc. Whole bunch of stuff still firing. This thing is slow as molasses, but should pop his shield properly. 
And if you get a shield down, you can hit him and peek in and out and do this right here. Now, if you're coming from another angle, I'll show you guys what I would probably find an easier angle to get to him. Now, this is going to be a bit of a long trip, but follow me. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm back. Basically, I've gone around the binary shrine. So, if I come up here to the front and I go out to the left, you have these rocks where you can circle around. So, again, range in this fight does seem to be better. So my advice is get to where you can be as about as far from any of these bosses as possible. Up, down, left, right, whatever's going to work for you, try and find your range. But one of the ones he tends to not hide at is one that's a little bit to get to. But I'll show you guys how to get there. So if, you, if you're having issues being closer, when you come out of here, instead of going kind of up the ramp to the left... There's still an acolyte up there? Alright, well we're going to go to my left, actually. And we're going to head towards the Tower of the Deep. And this is going to give you a different angle on this area. And almost basically a straight shot. And this is one of those few places where most of them are kind of like they're going to be in a dome. But we do have some more Thrall that come over here. Remember when I said in the very beginning you can go to the left or the right from the big hallway? This is what I'm over here to the left in a big circle. Now if you guys are confused, I'll try and give you a point of reference once I kill the Thrall. Just of exactly where I'm at. Because remember, there are going to be a ton of them, so work them down. However you see fit. Take a little close, pop a grenade, pop a melee, do what you need to do. Just don't die. Not for all. That's just not good. For anybody, that kind of ruins your day. A couple more stragglers. Alright, so that's pretty much everything. I can grab my orb. So my super back. Now, if you need a point of reference of where those Thrall were at, I'll show you. So if you come back to the middle, here's our room, hallowed ground, with the diving bird. I went to the right the first time to the garden where we fought the Vandal. Over here to the left, when you peek out, the Thrall will spawn, just as they did on the other side. And if you want to get to the binary shrine, take these rocks kind of around to the outside. But if we want to go up to a different area, we're going to go up to the Tower of the Deep. And this is the one with the dragon breathing fire to the right. So, you all also notice I have a straight shot right down the pipe for the Temple of the Infinite. Now, for whatever reason, from this angle, um, as you get a little closer, usually the boss will at least face you. Now, I say that and he's probably going to hide. We also have some snipers. This is going to be fun. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Keep moving. And again, this is what I mean. If you get snipers above you, be careful. Get to a point where you feel like you're safe. And pull back. Now, they got some range on them without a doubt. So, there's one pretty much on top of the Temple of the Infinite. The one over here pretty much on top of the Shattered Cliffs. Actually, two of them are on top of the Shattered Cliffs. The reason I say the Shattered Cliffs, there's actually another section off to my left. Kind of down through there, but we'll probably have to get to at some point. It also sounds like there's one on my right. Hey, what's up, buddy? He's actually going to be on that rock ledge over there. And, of course, the heavy ammo he drops fell down. So there are multiple ways. It's just one big connected circle. You can get to all of these however you got to do it. But, again, trying to pop his shield off however I can. This thing is slow. I mean, it's hard, but, man, it is slow. I don't know if it hits hard enough. Or as slow as it fires. Always look for those axiom bolts first. And if you can get any type of damage on him, however you need to, try and keep that damage on him once that shield drops. So me, I'll switch over to this thing just because it'll get more bullets out. I'll keep the shield down. If I need to throw a grenade up there, that might help a little bit. Work him down, melt him down. He's one of the more annoying ones, pretty much any of the ones with the shields. And by happenstance, we're going to make a quick U-turn. So, I'm in the room with the Circle of the Infinite, Temple of the Infinite, and we're going to the Dragon Breathing Fire to the right, which is right back where we came from, which is going to be the Temple of the Deep. Now, when you get up here, this is going to be a Captain Solar Shield. So, you can go Whisper, you can go Icolo Shotgun, you can go Sleeper, but he can be a little bit aggressive, so my advice is just play this cautious and be ready if you need to, 
to basically not run off the edge. <laughs> I know that sounds dumb, but run down this ramp and get to safety if need to, because everything's going to be in this little room right here. So, work on the ads first, just because you know how annoying they get with their little acolytes, eyeballs. So try and take those out first before they spawn more, and before he jumps on top of your head. If he gets black, just try and get a feel, come down the ramp, run wherever you need to, just make sure you're on solid ground. Kind of an important step to that. Now again, if I do want to pop his shield, I can do it. If I can get a view of him. Really, buddy? And when you pop his shield, make the shot count, and then probably hide, because those black circles of doom are really annoying. Still hurts. And I'm like 599. Now there's one acolyte over here and his eye, and 14,000 other eyes that he spawned. Now I've got a grenade, so I'm going to try and pop his shield that way, just to work him down. Shield sounds down. Captain Ball of Doom. And I actually made those shots count for a change. So, come on in, and now we have the bird facing to the left. This is going to be the Temple of the Sky. So... We're going to head basically to the top middle. So from where you entered, it's pretty much straight through to the other end of the map. So the best way to get there, head back towards this, you know, where the Thrall were spawning. And then we're going to head towards the Binary Shrine around these rocks. Not too many, no Taken Blasters launching you off edges or anything. You can go, I'd probably go straight up the middle actually. Grab any ammo you need. Now up here, you're going to have a Hobgoblin Sniper. Now again, snipers, they don't take a ton of shots, but if they hit you, they hurt you quite a bit. So be careful. And depending on if you need to retreat, if you go up to the top and then say start running down that right-hand bridge, you're going to have some phalanx that come up over there. So my advice to clear out any further ads, because we're pretty close along already. Head over here, and we're going to jump up on the walkway that we didn't take previously. If you're looking for that sniper's location, right there. Now, you're going to have some that spawn behind you and in front of you. You just can't see the ones behind you. Or in front of you, actually. But use a grenade, because these guys get to be really annoying with their shields. Take them out, anything you can, but work them down. If you got to use cover, come up here. Stay in cover. Joel also notice there's two up there. Can't really see them until you jump up there, so they're just waiting to blast you off. So, if you can jump on this, you might have just enough height to be able to shoot these guys. And apparently I've also got a sight line on the boss, which is terrifying because he's a sniper. I'm actually ducking behind the phalanx of shield for a change. Yep, that's the sniper. So, he's up there. Now, I jumped off because took some damage from him. I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to kill him from up here. would be kind of cool if I could. I can kill him from up here. Um, it's going to avoid me a lot of Thrall, because there are three sections of Thrall. The last one, right up there on the top. There's also going to have his Acolytes, and then he's going to have his shield. And I don't know if he's ever going to peek up again. Probably not worth waiting for you guys' sake. Once you come up here, there's your Thrall. They come in just like before. So if you want to have a little range for him, come back here, stand on the little platform, and then work him down from wherever you can see him. Now, they may hide for a little while. They tend to be a little annoying on that front. So if you do have to jump up there, just know you can retreat back a little bit. But if you can actually see the boss, focus on him for a second. And then the Thrall will come and mess your day up. So it's kind of a balance. Now, that one actually jumped down. But the boss has still got line of sight on me. So I'm going to see if I can focus on the boss since he is hell-bent on ruining my day right down here. Come on. He's going to peek back up. I know he is. Wait for Whispered Breathing, which is up. See, they all hide surprisingly well. So basically, as soon as I jump up here, he's going to peek forward. So look for your Thrall. Start shooting those. And just keep an eye out for the boss. There are a lot of Thrall up here, though. So if you need to do something like a grenade, that might work well. And then pull back down. At least you got most of them down there to you. Those chain explosions can work. All right. So... That should be the Thrall. Boss is back. Stab. Twice. With your Whisper, and we're good to go. Now, you still got the Acolytes in there. Technically, you don't have to kill them. You could peek the symbol and run, but I advise just killing everything. 
make no question about it, what remains? And just in case there's any heavy ammo in there, anything you need, there you go. Actually, you may need to kill all the adds because that's when this will finally spawn. So now we have the two fish kind of doing a circle. Those are going to be in the one place I told you guys we have not been. This is called the Shattered Cliffs. So we got to go pretty much all the way back to the other side. Hope you guys now see why I drew a map because this place is kind of a maze. So from here, that looks like a taken egg, but I don't actually think it is. I'll do the eggs and stuff in this in a later part of the video. Right now, this is just a guide around this place. Uh, basically, what we're doing is you've got the Temple of um, the Infinite is right there. And then it's kind of back, literally the cliffs, it's back behind it. So you're going to jump down to the right. And again, yours is going to be a different order. But I'm hoping i show you guys where just about everything is at so you're comfortable wandering around in here. And if you die and have to do it all over again, believe me, I've probably had to redo this more times than I should have just to get this video done. But, you know, for science, right? So we're going down there. So I told you guys where it was at before. So once you come main entrance, go to the left up here. And again, this is why the map hopefully helps. We're at the Tower of the Deep. You're going to take the stairs down to your right. Go in the lower area. Now, once you are down here, you are going to be able to deal with the boss itself. But if you get close enough, there is also a captain back there that will spawn. Like one of the ones that popped out of the walls. Yeah, he's going to do it again. So this guy is going to be a big phalanx. He's going to be fun. So just use your cover. And if you can get him to show his face right here and not have to peek back there, then you're in great shape. Now, Whisper obviously makes this easier if you're working with something else. Yeah, this is definitely going to be more time consuming. I'm not arguing. So, but the captain's going to jump out of this wall right here. There he is. This is why I don't like fighting these captains. Mostly because they're black balls of doom. And they teleport like crazy. So from here, I just wanted him done and gone and quick. You could go super on them if you want to. And now we come full circle. So... In here, we have the Diving Bird. This is your last symbol. We go back to the middle, and this is where this one will actually wrap up. But before I do that, if you guys want to jump ahead to the final boss, I'll show you. It's nothing crazy. It's um, just one more enemy that you've got to fight. But I want to show you guys where a couple things are at in here, actually. So, when you finish this thing, uh, when you finish the Ogre in the Shattered Throne, there's actually a statue. You need to make sure you talk to it. And it will start your quest for the Wish Ender, which is the bow that breaks all these eggs around here. So there are two places for these eggs. One is in the Binary Shrine. This place with the uh, W Snake. Big tree in the middle. So if you are facing the W Snake, look up and to your right. It's kind of hard to see if you're right underneath the tree. But this is egg number one. Now the other one from here is going to be kind of back where we were. I just want to start you guys from a central location. So Binary Shrine, head, if you're facing the symbol, head out to your right, up the rocks, and around the edges here. Now from here, this is where those thralls spawned, you want to jump up on this rock, get some height, slightly around the corner here, and there is egg number two. These are both of the eggs within this section, and I don't think there are actually any more. There's nine total in the Shattered Throne, but these are the only two in Erebus. Now, there's one more piece I want to talk to you guys about. When you're doing the Wish Ender Bow quest, there, is, there are three tokens that will spawn. I don't know if they're on this character. There are. Okay, so you have three tokens that spawn by going through the quest progression. Basically, what you have to do, you have to go find a little thing in the Four Horn Gulch in uh, the Shattered... What is it? Tangled Shore. So you go there, start the quest, you'll go through a crazy long mission. When you go through that, at the end of that, there are three bosses, basically. When you kill all of them, you will get these three tokens. What you have to do is come back into the Shattered Throne with the three tokens, and each one is going to be worth a boss that you have to summon. But to summon it, you have to take an orb and take it from one spot to another. The first one is this guy. A, basically, a slain Minotaur, but there are two. So what you're going to want to do is from where you're at, actually right where I'm at, if you can stay up here, on top of this statue. 
So this is the Tower of the Deep. This is the dragon breathing fire to the right. On top of it is where you're going to find the orb. Now the orb, you'll run over here. Pick it up. And it depends on your character class and how you want to make it across. Now there are multiple ways to get there. But what we're looking to do is actually get back where I'm facing right now. Now I know Titan and Warlock can make this jump. I'm not sure if Hunters can. So either way, there are ways to get up there, because you can actually traverse up the side where the egg is at and get to the top. Uh, the fast way is going to be like this. Land on the statue's head, and then all the way over here to the roof. And again, depends on your character class. Warlock, of course, always floats. But you can also, a buddy of mine missed that jump, and you can also just jump up this side over here. Just work your way up the rocks. I'll show you guys how. Just work your way up. So... Up here, try and get a little bit of a landing. Up here, peek your way in, jump up, and just work your way up the side. And again, you'll be right next to the egg in case you need to find it. So when you bring the orb to the top, what you're going to see... Random Riven talking to us. You'll notice statues have orb, 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 orb. One of them doesn't. When you put this in, you're going to spawn two giant minotaurs. Now, I'm going to try and kill them. I hope this isn't a mistake. If it is, then I'm going to cut back and basically wrap up the explanation so you guys can finish this thing up. So we're going to go ahead and put it in. Now, remember, this is only from the wish and request. You have to go through the wish and request, do the side mission, come back in here with the tokens, then this is an option. So when that spawns, you're going to see the minotaurs pop in. They're big. They go down fairly quick, but you don't have a ton of cover in this place, so watch your cover. They're just two Minotaurs, they're not crazy. And again, just try and hit them in the face. They're big, so the target's big. That Minotaur is down. Now we go. So one is down, one more to go. Again, always look for that little shiny spot on their head. And done. So you are worthy-er. So that would have actually kind of opened up the token. And that is that piece of a wrap. Now, the final piece is back to the opening section. Glad I actually did that without dying. Kind of happy. Didn't want to have to do all that all over again. Alright, so we are back towards the middle. We are in the main entrance, and you'll notice, heads up, there's the boss. This is going to be another captain. He's fun. As soon as you can see him, he will be on the aggressive side, without a doubt. So play him cautious, because those black balls of doom get to be really annoying. And I may peek in and out of the room, that's fine. But that circle of doom is really annoying. So I'd go grenade, actually, to try and drop his shield if you can. If not, well, something solar is going to be important for a few of these fights. And he's tucked off to the right somewhere. Where is he? Closer than he should be, I know that. Now there's some heavy ammo in there, but I also know he's around the corner. So if I do get in there, I'm going to pop that shield pretty quick. Where'd he go? This is a really bad way to rock walk around the corner with your head down a sniper rifle. There. And again, soon he's going to fire the big black ball of doom. Turn around. At some point, I'm going to have to run for that heavy ammo. Now, if you really actually want to play it really safe, you could go complete circle around this thing. Oh, come on, buddy. I keep missing a lot of my shots, which is not great. And he keeps doing that, so I can't keep damage on him as well. So, make it a life really fun there, bud. Uh, get some health up. I'm going to go run for some ammo here. This is a mistake, but I'm going to try it. And again, you can run all the way through, and now we're back on the other side, the Garden of the Prophet. And I got some ammo. Well, this is probably where solar would be beneficial to have if you even need to switch over to something like my trust hand cannon if I got low. That'd be worth it, so you could drop his shield. And that is a wrap. So, safe patches awaits. 
and you go down into the descent. So, I know it was kind of a long explanation to get here, but from the diving bird, this is the final room that you fight. Once you go down in there, that is the next section. So this is checkpoint number one. You have to do this whole thing, and if you die, you have to redo it all. So, that's why playing cautious on this one is very, very beneficial, especially if you guys are trying to do this solo. Now, my recommendation, be as highlight level as you feasibly can. I wouldn't come in here if you're solo much below like 580 to do this first part, maybe 590 if you're trying to solo it. I would not try and do this thing solo at like 550. Now, if you get a group and you want to try and do this first section at like, you know, 550, 560, we did that. But when we got to the ogre, which is about two more stages in, that thing is 580 and we were just getting wrecked. So, depending on how far you want to go and how big your group size is, kind of would be your level to consider. Um, but you are going to have arc shields on the Centurion. You're going to have a couple with solar shields. Both are the captains. Um, and the ones that come out of the walls and both the captain bosses. So have something that's solar, that's powerful. Have maybe a little thing in backup that's arc if you want to switch to it. And then, you know, whatever you decide to run with here, that's up to you. I just have been using my go figure because I love this gun. But that is the opening section for the Shattered Throne. And it's called Erebus. So those are all the symbols. I hope the map helped you guys. I hope this guide helped you guys. And then the section section will be the descent. And I will work on that in a separate video for you guys. So tune in for that one later. I'm going to be trying to do these like maybe one a day if I can get all this stuff done in sequence. But thank you guys for tuning in. The support lately has been awesome. I know this is a long video, but it's a lot to cover. Um, and thank you guys. This, like the subs lately, the growth, everything has been really, really, really great. So just keep that coming. You guys can follow me on Twitch or on Twitter. Um, Ebontis on both. And then right here on YouTube, if you guys are watching this here, hit that subscribe button, hit the alert bell, and I'll keep more guides like this coming to you. So thank you guys very much. I will see you soon. Have yourselves a great and awesome day, and enjoy your gaming time. See you soon.